Greetings everyone, Xanrath here, and welcome back to Grudge Match, a Hearthstone series between two fierce competitors, Advanced Chow and Match, for Valor, Family Honor, and Social Acceptance. Last time, Match was able to even up the series at one apiece, so let's see who will pull out ahead today in Grudge Match Legacy, where our players will be competing in a best of three, utilizing iconic decks that help shape their respective metas before rotating out of the standard format. Looks like the players are ready, so let's go ahead and jump into Game 1. Alright, and it looks like we're going to have Match up top piloting the Freeze Mage deck. And on the bottom we have Advanced Chow playing the classic Azu Warlock. Going to mulligan that Murakoil and Implosion, keeping the Void Walker. Of course, always want to have a turn 1 play. And look at that, Dr. Boom comes into hand. We know what's going to happen on turn 7. So, turn 1 from Match, going to pass. And Soulfire comes to hand, but I can't imagine he's going to uh, Soulfire Match in the face, so... Probably going to see the Void Walker coming down from Advanced Chow. There it is. And turn two for match now. We have... Looks like we're going to see the Mad Scientist now. And turn two, probably going to be Haunted Creeper from Advanced Chow's side. Again, not a very good Soulfire target, so it's more than likely what we're going to see. Uh, I guess he's considering going with the Clockwork Gnome and maybe Soulfire, but nope. Looks like he's going to play the Haunted Creeper and... Boy Walker goes to face, of course. Or, no, it looks like he might consider bumping it into the Mad Scientist. Uh, that opens up a ping next turn, and then the Mad Scientist can trade into the Haunted Creeper. Of course, it gives him the 1-1s one to clear it up afterwards. But, uh, no, it looks like he's considering still. And, no, ultimately, just going to go to face. You want to make a uh, match attack with the Mad Scientist on its own accord. So, Acolyte of Pain comes down from match. Going to get some draws. Although... Advanced Chow does have the Soul Fire in hand to deny multiple draws from the Acolyte, so probably going to see that. Um, he might not know if this is Freeze Mage, uh, may not know how relevant um, getting multiple draws uh, is going to be for, for Match here, but then again, he does have only have two 1-1 one, one minions and possibly more 1-1 one, one minions coming out from the Spider. It looks like he's going to trade that in, so there's going to be multiple 1-1 one, one minions. It's going to get too much value if he leaves that Acolyte up, so here's the Soul Fire. It looks like it's going to discard... Power Overwhelming, alright, smart play, not discarding the Dr. Boom. Uh, Lothab also would have been a pretty poor discard as well. So tapping into the Dark Iron Dwarf, Clockwork Gnome comes down and uh, looks like he's going yeah, to coin that out. And of course, and then the, of course, the one damaged face from our good friend, the Void Walker. So now on four mana, looks like Manch is going to throw down a Novice. And it's going to ping off the Clockwork. Let's see what the spare part is. And it's going to be the coolant, so it's going to be Freeze. And so another Power Overwhelming comes into hand. Dark Iron Dwarf's going to come out on one of the Spectral Spiders, trading in the other one. Of course, going to keep the Taunt up, so here's four damage to face. Um, Secret is up. We don't know what that is yet, but presumably Barrier or Block, as this is, of course, Freeze Mage. So turn five, match is... Looks like he's just going to ping. Yep, he's going to ping. Originally pointing at that Dark Iron Dwarf, but... Thought about pinging something else. Maybe he's going to consider something else uh, from hand. Of course, we can't see his hand right now. Unfortunately, got some technical difficulties going on, but hopefully we can resolve that shortly. And still mousing over that hero power. And unless he's had something four mana uh, or five mana at that, still probably considering that, that hero power. Mm. Unless he wants to play something, use that mana for something else. Taking his time. And looks like he's ultimately going to be ping the... Dark Iron Dwarf, maybe tele, uh, telegraphing a, a blizzard or something coming up. So, Life Tap comes out, Soul Fire comes into hand. Um, didn't even pay any heed to the Lotheb on turn 5. Of course, he's probably wanting to save that for when a match can potentially burst him and to prevent that from happening. So, it looks like he's thinking about Dark Bombing here uh, just for extra damage, put some more pressure on the Freeze Mage. Looks like. Uh, Advanced might have gotten the read that this is this is Freeze Mage. Considering that Dark Mom, probably not going to Soul Fire this turn. And still really thinking, he already attacked with all his minions, so that power overwhelming isn't going to be very helpful right now. And looks like he's still considering whether he wants the Dark Bomb. I guess he may be also considering the Soul Fire. Maybe he's tallying damage uh, into the coming turn. So now we know that is a Ice Block. So he's counting his damage, perhaps. No, nope, looks like he's just going to pass. Maybe save that all for burst when Match is least expecting it. Blizzard comes down. Kind of suspected that with the ping on the Dark Iron Dwarf. 
And so now an abusive comes in the hand, not very great in terms of uh, developing a board state. Although with that, probably don't want to be playing that, want to save it again, like I said. Um, and like Advanced Chow is probably thinking for a turn where he could possibly be bursted down just to buy him one more turn. Another abusive sergeant comes into the hand from the tap. Uh, really unfortunate, not getting some sticky minions or just really better minions in general. Looks like he's going to double abusive onto the Dark Iron Dwarf. Um, kind of futile that damage isn't going to be used, unfortunately. And so turn 7 here for match. He's going to go ahead and just ping off that 4-1. Looks like he has something for... Got a fireball for Advanced Child's face. So now we got Dr. Seven on turn 7, but that fireball face might be telegraphing a, a possible kill soon in terms of uh, spells from hand. So we might... So Advanced Child might want to consider this Lothar right here. Uh, he can't even pop the block, though. It's not going to be... He's not in a very great spot. It looks like he's just going to go ahead and throw down to the Dr. Seven. And thinking about it, there it is. Of course, two damage to face, but uh, if anything, that fireball to face last turn might mean that uh, Match has lethal in hand. 18 damage with 8 mana. Uh, one fireball down. Possible uh, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance would be 11. And then another fireball would be 17, so not quite, not quite lethal yet. And so, he does have the ice block as insurance, so he does definitely, if he doesn't have it now, he has next turn to uh, to pull off that combo, if he does have that in hand, indeed. One ping would do it from this turn, that's all he really needs. It looks like a frost note is going to come out, so ultimately he's going to have more than uh, next turn to finish off Vance Chow. No threats of... Uh, being having his block popped this turn. Although, it looks like on board, Vanshire really only has... Looks like he's going to go with the Mortal Call on one of his Boom Bots just to draw a card and a deal 1 to 4 damage. Looks like he's going to go with 3 damage. And uh, he does have 7 in hand. It could drop a Lotheb here to prevent any sort of uh, possible or potential uh, kill from... Match. It looks like he's going to throw out the Knife Juggler first just to get one extra damage in from the Dagger off of Lotheb. And so now he has, considering his damage spell, 7 in hand, Lotheb is more than likely going to have to come out just given the likely... No, it looks like he's going to consider... He's just going to throw out the Emergency Coolant. Uh, very interesting, and he's going to pass. It looks like he's... He probably understands that Lotheb this turn isn't going to be able to do anything. Um, just because Match does have the Ice Block up. And looks like Match emoting. Seems like he has the lethal in hand. Unless he's just bluffing. Blood Mage Thalanos comes down. And here is a Frostbolt. Probably going to see two Ice Lances. Another Frostbolt. And then double Ice Lance would definitely be enough. Here's one. And looks like... Unless he's bluffing. Nope, there it is. There is the Ice Lance. So match will take it. Freeze Mage over Zulok in Game 1 of Grudge Match Legacy. A very convincing win for Match. They're able to close out the game in less than 10 turns. And uh, it's very smart of him to draw basically all of his burn spells in the top 15 or so cards of his deck. Because as we saw, Advanced Shout had that Lothep ready and waiting in hand. But didn't drop it because, you know, unfortunately... It only would have bought him one more turn, and he still would have had to get through that ice block. So not enough time, and match takes the win. And it uh, looks like our players are about ready again, so let's go ahead and jump into their game. So for game two, we're going to have match on Face Hunter, and Advanced Chow's going to be playing the Mech Mage. And it looks like we got match's hand visible now, so that's great. We're going to be able to see everything he's considering uh, in his hand. So Mech Mage... Throwing out the hello, Clockwork Gnome coming out. Looks like we're going to have a Warrior Infiltrator coming out from Match's side to contest. Uh, stealth, so immune to ping. Very fortunate. And looks like we don't get a 2-drop on Advanced Chow's side, so that ping is just going to go to face. But, uh, you know, two aggressive decks, two face decks, so we're in for some SM work action here. And it looks like we're going to see the Mad Scientist coming out and the... 
Infiltrator is just going to go face, keeping true to the name. Very smart play by Match there. And then a Tinkertown Tech comes down, gets the buff and the taunt uh, spare part. And looks like looks like Advanced Shadow is considering playing, the, playing a little bit of a longer game. Going for some trades, try to stave off some of that damage. Might consider going with the trade into the Mad Scientist. It does pull out a secret, but he does get to ping off that working Infiltrator next turn. Although he does have some um, possible 4-drops. And nope, looks like it's just going to all face. This is a good old face race. So possibly seeing the bow come out from match. Looks like we're going to see that. And looks... Yep, there we go. There it is. And I'm wondering if he's just going to go face. Looks like it is... Everything has nope is gonna go consider trade. Okay, so looks like so it looks like this is setting up for an explosive trap. So I'm curious if Match does not play anything other than that, maybe that one copy of Snake Trap in his hand. But uh Blast Mage can come down, but no, it looks like he's just gonna go ahead and trade the Clockwork No Man. Uh, gets a stealth. Stealth uh, spare part there. Looks like he's considering going with the Gorilla Bot, but does realize it doesn't actually have a mech on board anymore. So he's going to consider playing the Shredder. It looks hmm, interesting. To, so it looks like Advanced Chow is going to, instead of proccing the trap, which is very clearly an uh, explosive trap based on the plays that uh, Match made, uh, but it looks like he's going to try to avoid giving uh, Match some more bow charges. That's probably what he's considering, even though he doesn't necessarily know for sure. It's a explosive trap. It looks like Match considered playing the Haunted Creeper, but instead is just going to go ahead and hear power instead. Grillbot comes down to discover. It's just got Zubot, Snow Chugga, and Clockwork. Um, of course, the Zubot was not in these classic uh, legacy uh, decks uh, were available at the time, but, you know, unfortunately, that's just how. Uh, that's just a byproduct of playing in today's formats uh these old decks anyways looks like he's considering going with a taunt and looks like he's ending up it's gonna go with it onto the gorilla bot so still playing that long game not wanting to proc the trap not wanting to give extra bow charges he knows what face hunter wants to do so here's a snake trap coming from hand and then a it looks like the knife juggler is going to come out and try to get some snake trap action with the knife juggler and so vanished out here kind of sitting in an awkward spot doesn't want to proc the trap but kind of isn't getting that many options so it looks like he's going to go and attack with the tinkertown tech here's the snake trap and let's see where these knives go are they going to go face nope they're going to go to the gorilla bot at least one of them first one at least and second one goes to the tinkertown tech let's see if he can snipe down that tinkertown tech and nope, it's going to go SM Orc all day. So we have the extra bow charge now. And we could see the Goblin Blast Mage trying to clear off this board here. Does have a ping for insurance, so... Still thinking about what he wants to do. I'm pretty sure that Goblin Blast Mage happens every time. I guess he might be considering that Gorilla Bot. But, you know, I think that Blast Mage, you really want to... Force him, uh, force advanced, or force match rather. Advanced wants to force match to uh, use that bow charge. Looks like he's going to go ahead and attack in with that shredder. So here's an explosive trap. And now we're going to go with the, oh, that's what he was considering. He's considering popping the explosive trap before playing the blast mage. Uh, but he's not even mounting over the blast mage right now. It looks like he's considering that snow chugga. So I would imagine if he wants to play the snow chugga, he has to play the blast mage. So looks like he's going to go and do that after the snow chugga it does get the clear statistically likely and this bow charge unfortunately is going to have to go into that one health gorilla bot and that snow chugga is now going to be preventing uh the bow from being used if it gets to connect the face we could see a potential hit on the gorilla bot to prevent that from happening by attacking the snow chugga and just getting frozen one turn but no it has to go face uh well i mean i guess match is playing this correctly right he does want to go face so that knife dragger is like all right boss i got the agenda and went face although maybe in that instance it's probably go it's probably better to go a little bit off plan uh fireball comes into hand this is 9 15 damage not quite 16 with the um hero power uh doctor 7 is in hand i totally forgot about that and it is turn 7 so 
that might be an indication for something. <laughs> and we could consider sending in the um, Snow Chug again to face prevent three damage from the bow. And then maybe some clearing nubs gonna go face, face, face. Nope, just face, face. Nope, face, face, face. And Dr. Boom is more than likely gonna come down. Um, looks like he has. He does have the beast for activation. So we could see. So here is two. Um, he has five from hand. Seven, you can send out the dire wolf. So that's. The boom box is gonna hit the. Oh, how unfortunate. It hits the ice creep. Uh, the haunted creeper. Summoning the spectre spiders. Those, none of those daggers go to face. That two damage was for naught. Here's a hero power. And kill command. Maybe coming out. Maybe it's to be a bottom right concede. It's going to go ahead and kill command. And send three to face. So even if that Haunter Creeper would have um, dealt the one damage and maybe got two more daggers face, still wouldn't have been enough. Needed to have that bow. But uh, unfortunately, for match, that was not the case. So... Advantage Chow here is going to take the victory with Mech Mage. Now that game was a lot closer than the first game, and Mech Mage was able to outface the Face Hunter in the Smork race, but I think that's attributable to Advantage Chow's very smart play. You know, not proccing that explosive trap uh, early on to give extra bow charges and extra damage to match. You know, because it's very easy to just say, let's go ahead and just proc it and try to be, you know, aggressive by playing more cards on the board, because, you know, Mech Mage is ultimately a, a d aggressive deck as well, and trying to get board presence is what it wants to do. Um, but holding off and just not proccing it uh, and just not giving match an extra three damage from extra bow charge was very smart because he was very close. You saw at the end, things didn't go ideally, but if he was just, say, like three damage closer to killing Advanced Chow um, with an extra bow charge, say, because Advanced Chow would have proc that Exposure Trap, I think he almost would have had guaranteed lethal, if not guaranteed lethal, on that play that he ultimately fell, what was it, like five damage short. So, very smart play, very patient play from Vanch Chow there. So with that, we're all tied up here at Grudge Match Legacy, so we're going to have to go to a final deciding game three. And here we go, the final game of Grudge Match Legacy is going to come down to this. It's going to be match on Handlock and Advance Chow on Midrange Paladin. Both sides, desperate for a win here, wanting to go up 2-1 overall in the series. And it looks like we have a pretty good start from Advanced Child with the Shield Mini Bot, but look at that on Match's side. We've got the Mountain Giant, we got a Twilight Drake in hand. It's gonna be a crazy opener. It looks like both sides are equally equally excited about this match. Uh, throwing out the emotes. Here's the mini bot from Advanced Child. Probably gonna see a tap from Match's side. And uh, indeed we do. Next turn might consider coining out that Twilight Drake. Yeah, turn three, Twilight Drake's gonna be pretty strong. Looks like a hero power's just gonna come out here. Wanna get some value off of that Arjun Protector later, so there's two damage to face. Looks like we're gonna go ahead. Another Twilight Drake comes into hand for match. Gonna coin the first one out. And this is already gonna be a really strong board. Next turn is probably gonna drop another Twilight Drake. Um, and then the following turn, considering the uh, the mountain giant there. But it looks like not that much on turn four for Vanch out here. It's just gonna hear a power. It's gonna throw out the Arjun Protector onto one of the Silverhand recruits. Just to try to get some more presence. Can't really deal with that Twilight Drake quite yet. So there's that. And looks like... Uh, so Lipman's Chow... Or actually Match, sorry. Is going to attack into that mini bot. And Hellfire is going to clear out pretty much the whole board. Leaves the 1-1 one, one up. Um, but a top deck Sledge Belcher is going to deal with that 3 health Twilight Drake very effectively. So one damage is going to go to face. And looks like we have... we can. Uh, looks like Match can definitely throw out that Mountain Giant. Um... It's kind of awkward leaving up that one health Sludge Belcher, but looks like he's going to end up... He's not going to attack. Want to make Advanced Chow trade into that. Uh, looks like, oh, the top deck Peacekeeper coming in just in time for the Mountain Giant. Of course, going to help that Mountain Giant uh, feel like you're not losing as much slamming 8 damage into a one health Sludge Belcher next turn when he has to clear it. But uh, looks like... Looks like Advanced Chow is actually going to go ahead and reciprocate and say, "Hey, if you want, if you don't want to attack my Sledge Busher, feel free. I'm just going to keep pounding you in the face." So there it is, four damage to face. Mortal Coil comes out, so that Twilight Drake can actually go into that Sledge Belcher and then he can coil. But uh, again, that Mountain Giant not being at eight health or eight attack, um, might as well use it as a Dude Slayer or a or a three-one Belcher Killer.
Uh, does also have a Siphon Soul in hand. Sylvana has plenty of other plays. Uh, plenty of um, Ancient Watchers as well. He could slam down another Twilight Drake as well uh, on top of a Ancient Watcher and just hope for a, uh, a Taunt Enabler to get some value off of those big health minions. Just really considering his plays here, though, um, which makes sense. Take the time, right? Uh, looks like he's going to throw out the Ancient Watcher and is going to go with the Shadow Flame. And so he's going to trade in or hit in with the 1 8 Giant. And then that Twilight Drake is going to stay up because he just kills off the little 1 2 Slime. So we've got the Hammer of Wrath coming into hand from Advantage Town. Interesting tech card there. Sylvanas, um, not the best because he has uh, a rematch has five power on board. So we're just going to see the Hammer of Wrath. It's going to draw a Ragnaros. So both sides got Ragnaroses, but Advantage is going to be able to get his out first next turn. So here's just the 1-1, one, one, floats one mana, and then another Mountain Giant comes into hand. You could tap and play the Mountain Giants. Uh, looks like he's going to consider just coiling. Nub's going to throw out the Sylvanas and coil. So now that Ragnaros sitting in Advantage Child's hand, not the best consideration right now. You know, he has a he does have a 1 in 3 chance of basically giving the Ragnaros to match. But looks like he might consider just throwing out his own Sylvanas. Uh, this way, I guess, if Match wants to, he can trade his Sylvanas and just give him the 1-5. Not that bad. Uh, and then he can throw out the Ragnaros of his own. So, probably, uh, I guess Advanced Child might have considered playing out the Lothab. Uh, but, looks like we're going to go ahead and see the 1-5 Giant. Oh, nope, it's going to go face with the Sylvanas, and of course, he's got the Siphon Soul in hand. Siphon Soul does work on your own main. It's going to steal Advanced Chow's uh, Sylvanas. Going ahead and tap for good me measure, and Advanced Chow is not in a great place right now. He's got the Avenging Route also uh, in hand. Very interesting tech there as well. I did not notice that for a while, so we could see that. It's possible that it could clear the Sylvanas. Uh, no, it looks like he's just going to go ahead and throw out the Lotheb. It's considering, still considering all of his options, we could see, we could see the Avenging Wrath into Hero Power, uh, and then just try to deal with that Sylvanas the next turn. Does have the Peacekeeper in hand in case anything big comes down, and looks like he's considering Peacekeeping the Sylvanas, uh, and just kind of leave that threat on the board, but not as threatening in terms of having attack power, but still obviously threatening in the, in the fact that it's going to steal your minion when it uh, dies. So, very tough choice here for Advanced Child. Looks like he's going to go for the Avenging Wrath. There's a possibility of clearing the Sylvanas, but we'll have to see how good Advanced Child is. And it looks like not good enough to get the full clear. He does have the Consecrate available in the next turn, um, but just going to send out a 1-1, one, one, basically to die to that Mountain Giant. Although, if you're a Silverhand recruit and you kill a Mountain Giant, that's not bad, right? So, Ragnaros is going to come down and... Nope, not quite. So if you think about it first. Yeah, he ultimately just does slam it. Sylvanas goes to face. Just 13 to face. And we might not be able to see the Consecrate because he doesn't... He needs to get a wide board. So we might see a Consecrate just to clear the Sylvanas. But then he has to go wide with the... Let's see, how many minions can he get on board? At most, he's going to be able to get two. Right? With the Peacekeeper and the Hero Power. That's the most he can get on board. And so he can come down to a one and three. To survive. Dark Bomb is in hand. No no real burst though from the hand warlock that he has to worry about. He just has to worry about surviving this one in three. At best one in three. So probably going to see the Peacekeeper uh, kind of moot. You know setting Ragnaros' attack to one. But you're gonna ha he has to do it. Hero power. And just pray. And we do actually have the Dark Bomb in hand for match here, so it, he can cut it down to a 1 and 2. Um, actually, he does have a, I believe that's a Shadow Flame in hand. He actually, and he has two Dark Bombs in hand, actually. So he could just play some minion, Shadow Flame, clear the board and get a guarantee lethal. And it looks like he's going to spot it. Looks like he's going to play the Mountain Giant. He didn't have to. He had a Ancient Watcher, but this is just a little bit more BM, right? And so we have the Dark Bomb. It's going to point it just to just extend the BM just a little bit. I'm sure he sees it. Of course, there's the Dark Bomb. 
and there is probably going to be the second Dark Maw. Might throw out the Zombie Chow just to saturate his mana for funsies. Here's the Dark Bomb. Nope. It's got to... It's got to let Advanced Chow know how resounding this win was. And it's going to go for the 50-50. looks like he's going to go for the BM 50-50. And he gets it. Very skilled play by uh, by Match there. And so that does it. Match takes it 2-1 in Grudge Match Legacy. Winning with his Freeze Mage and his Handlock. So... Definitely a proponent of the control kind of deck from uh, match there. And then Advance Chow, unfortunately, falling just a bit short. Um, very, very smart play, I think, from from match there to siphon Soul's own Sylvanas to take the Sylvanas rather than really just kind of giving it up, right? Valuing that siphon Soul, just giving up the Sylvanas, give the 1 4 or whatever that Mountain Giant was. It doesn't really matter, just play some big stuff. He really kind of played uh, in a way that made it really difficult because we saw after he stole that Sylvanas from Advanced Chow, like he couldn't slam his own rag, and that just gave uh, Match just so much more board presence and control of the game in terms of like giving him initiative to play his own rag and things like that uh, in order to win it out, basically. Eh? You know, 16 damage to face is not bad for one card. Um, of course, obviously, Match easily had the guaranteed lethal, but, you know, if anything we've learned from this series, this rivalry, is that if you can style on your opponent, you gots to style. So match, 2-1 in Grudge Match Legacy, 2-1 overall in the Grudge Match series. Doing really well, so we'll see how it goes next time. So until then, thank you for watching. Bye.